Happy Tuesday. Hello, friends. We are live here from Southeast Ohio, in which we have a blanket of snow all yes. over our land. Yeah. So I'm impressed that we all got in we here. All, we all made it today. We had I had a, a barrage of messages. So I'm out in one part of the county, and I had messaged Patty late last night. I was like, okay. This, is how, this yeah. is how the roads are in my area. How's it in your area? And then I was getting messages from other people like, well, how's it at your house? Because I have to drive by your house. We don't get a lot of snow here. Yeah, so it's, it's more of an anomaly. But um, you guys put a snowflake in the, in the chat if you have snow on the ground. Because I know that this weather system, it's um, Feb, is, no, not February. It's January. It's January 8th, 16th. 16th, okay. Yeah, we've had a bunch of messages. Um, snowy and cold in western New York. Yeah. Good morning from North Texas. It's 17 degrees. No. Oh, um, man. I get mad when Texas freezes. Good afternoon from Michigan. Staying cold outside. Yeah. Um, snowy Tennessee. Uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Snow on the ground and warmer today oh, at, at yeah. 8 degrees. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, we have another North Texas. It was minus 2 yesterday. <gasps> Whoa. Yes. Burr. Yeah, we had, um, actually, Texas has, like, scars for me because, you know, we had all of that, like, supply chain woes yeah. and stuff like that. And way back, like, three years ago, whenever Houston froze, um, it took out our paint manufacturer's paint line. Mm -hmm. And all the pipes froze in the paint line. Yeah. And it was out for a year. So I, like, literally have, like, some PTSD about that. Well, and I think that if today was any day but Tuesday, yeah. that we would have had a snow day today. I got a <laughs> message from my 11-year-old bonus daughter last night. And they called school at, like, 9 o'clock. So yeah. she knew pretty early. And right before bed, she said, I really hope you get a snow day tomorrow. And she just messaged me. And she said, did you get your snow day? No. <laughs> said, no, your dad did, but I did. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have some interesting things. We're going to kind of change up our little um, stuff. I need to do and show you how to do this sponging technique that I'm going to do on this tray, but then it's going to need a little drying time. So we're going to talk after... While it dries. While we're going to talk it dry. Talk it dry. Okay, so I do that like all the time. So there's two ways that you can go. You can... Um, when you need to do sponging, so we talked last week about the mother color mm -hmm. and mixing paints. If you didn't see that lesson, go back. Yeah. Um, and by the way, subscribe and do all of that kind of stuff. Give us thumbs ups. But um, anyway, so this is a really good example of using a mother color. But if you didn't want to, you could use water to dilute instead of paint. But I'm going to be using paint. And so... We will take our paint, and I think I will use a little bit of water so it's just thinner. I don't need to cover anything. I just need to get a coat of the color on here. So I'll use my spray bottle and just get a kind of a runnier base. And to keep it all wet at the same time, I could go ahead and mist. This is why we're going to need the drying time, right? And I'll probably pop out and go blow dry while we're doing some of this. Okay, so put one coat on. So I'm all based and dried, and then I moistened. And then we get it all in wet cream color, the number 22, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just check for even. You don't want dry spots. The paint will stick differently on a dry spot. Then you're going to take your um, spongy, and I've got it pre-wet. And I'm going to go into number 12. And I might even mix it into that mother color. All right, and then we're going to go over here. And I'm just going to sponge around here. I'm going to put a border on this, so I'm going to drag this in just a little bit. Now I can take a, this is kind of like move fast. I can take a stipply brush and I can blend those stipples so that it's not too like textury. I can also flip my brush, my brush, my sponge around, and I can go on the clean side and I can blend that way too. So I just don't want it too crunchy looking. And we can also add a little bit of water if we need to, so we can keep that moistened with water. And this is gonna need to be softened, so I gotta get all the way around with my color. And notice I'm rocking my hand back and forth. 
And now I'm going to pick up that mother color. And that's another way that I can blend is I can just go right over the top, pick up some more. And if anything is untoward or I don't like it, I can go in and I can fade them out. So I'm showing you like a million blending techniques. You want to take note of this. This is like a video you want to be like saved to my favorites because knowing how to work your colors is so important. Okay, so now I'll go in with my brush and I'll just fade some stuff back. Okay, and that's softening. Uh, yeah, so just no pressure on this brush. Notice my bristles are not bending. They're just, I'm using it like I'm sweeping with a broom. I love backgrounds. I love them. That is like my jam. We actually had someone send us a <clears throat> message not too long ago and said that they were coming to our in-person event that's happening in April. So we do have a couple tickets left for that. I can send Guys, the, come join me for yes, my birthday. We had a request from someone to do some cool background stuff. Oh, that's a good idea. There. So I think that's a fantastic idea. We're in the, we're in the, the talks of what we're going the to planning do. Stage. The planning period. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to step out into my prep alley that we have on the other side of this filming room. Um, notice that there's some hairs. Mm -hmm. That's just from the, the long bristles. I don't care about that. I'm going to dry it, and then I'll rub them off. We have a bit of stuff to talk about if you want to talk. And, 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 Are you sure? Yep. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks, yeah, Steve. Thank you, Steve. So, Steve. Steve is working solo today. Everybody is. give him a heart <laughs> because, like, he is um, Nick, who is normally on the other side of the screen here or the other side of the curtain that we have that muffles noises and stuff he is ill today so give steve a heart for um, one man band one is man what we, band what we call it in the news business he's yeah. being a one man band today and then give one for nick and be able to get better <laughs> get better nick uh, so, so let's go uh, yeah, yeah if you are completely new to what we're doing and you're like what the heck is she painting on what was that that yeah. is the Studio R12 Anyway Tray, and it is a super cool surface that you can use in so many ways. So this is what, let's show them what it looks like when it comes to okay. you. Let's do that. So, so just like Ikea, um, <laughs> it comes to you flat. Okay, so you get your pieces, and what's really cool about it, there's these really big um, pieces that you put your glue on, and we really like this Aileen's quick and tacky, uh, quick dry tacky glue. This is really quick drying, it's amazing. And it lands on its nose so that when you take it off, it's already preloaded. And it has been fabulous for all of our 3D, all of this kind of stuff. And so we put just a little drizzle of the glue on the tabs and then put everything together and it turns out like this. Thanks, so, and we have a picture of one of our designers um, definitely over 200 pounds um, standing on this. Um, that is, but this you, full it's, weight. it's on the product. Okay, it's so on the product. You can see page. it. Yeah. But it's a. And so when tech. we designed this, it was like if this is going to carry food or drinks or any of that kind of stuff, it has to be completely sturdy. So we gave it a test. And All right. we have lots of videos on Anyway Tray. So I'm going to share a playlist of different ways that we've painted them in the past. But I did want to let you know, for those of you who are watching us live, we are having a flash sale on oh, our Anyway Tray, Anyway Tray category. Yeah. category. Yeah. And there's over, let's see, 145 items in Yay. it. The tray itself is 50% off. You can get it today for $15. Today's January 16th, 2024. And then once you get your tray, what we typically do is we get our tray, we put it together, and we paint the background with a basic design, yeah, something so that you can use. Like this an, one is Rollins and an R. Something yeah. that you can use as an everyday. And yeah. then we have the tray inserts, and those are things that you can do for different seasons or mm -hmm. holidays, and they make great gifts that yeah. you give one of these to somebody, mm -hmm. and then 
you have the gift that keeps on giving because then at every right. holiday or season you can give them new yep. tray inserts and that's what patty's painting on today is the tray insert and it's only ten dollars today yeah you guys this is such a cool thing because the reason it's called an anyway tray is because you can do it for any season anything any way you want to so these are the inserts right so that's the back of it and it's so this is one for um, like if you had a daughter-in-law who was just getting into baking or something mm -hmm. like that, that would be a great kitchen insert. You can also use the inserts for placemats. So um, they super do the thing. You can. The one up there has a placemat in it. Yeah, so the one that's always grateful up there, it has burlap. We did that mm -hmm. lesson on how to um, paint on burlap. So then you can also at the Dollar Tree, this is their 12 by 18 placemat, mm -hmm. and I have a video on how to paint on that, and that means it's a dollar 25 or yep. whatever they've changed their pricing to, because like <laughs> all the supply, everything, and all the pricing, everything's. But anyway, so it's cheap. Um, but this is wonderful. I wouldn't paint on both sides because stickers are really hard to remove, but really nice mm -hmm. gifts. So I had um, a bear like an anyway bear, we'll call it, that I gave to my daughter-in-law, Cindy, um, way back when I still had a like a teaching shop and stuff like that. And it had little outfits, like the goose, yeah. right? But this was like wood outfits. And she just is like, please get me some more outfits. Oh my you know? gosh, I love that. I know, it was so sweet. But this is the same way. So now you can go into, you know, fall, and you flip it over, and they stack. Mm -hmm. So you can stack them, paint both sides of them, yep. and like I'm not even up to the handles yet. So this four. is what is yeah. cool about this, is that you can totally do this now. That did just get heavy. So, um, but they also store really well in the bottom of your drawer that has you know towels and that kind of thing. You mm -hmm. could totally put these there for storage. Well, so. in this time of year. Having a tray like this, mm -hmm. um, holidays is, go like this, right? It's um, sniffle season, mm -hmm. so putting a thing of uh, chicken noodle soup and your yes. drink and your tissues and your medicines and putting all of that on your tray and then just yeah. handing it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really good point, actually. So, um, if you had a little sick one or something like that, totally it contained like space to do it, and then you can make your um, tray inserts um, food proof by using the wax um, which is in one of our playlists someplace but um, let us go onward for a minute and talk about borders so I'm going to do a band around here and we're going to use thank you Steve you guys Steve is so patient all right so I'm going to use my banding stencil two rules with the banding stencil is when you lay it down you don't want to go all the way to your crisp edge over here because if you go to your crisp edge, it will be hard to blend later. So we're going to get a paper towel. The rule with stencils is you always offload whether you're using an ink sweeper, a jumbo dauber, or a dome brush. So any of those, you just always offload. So I'm going to use my ink sweeper and I'm going to use the number 13 gray, which is almost gone. I could mother color this um, and make it, ooh, hi, that was dry, that was good. And uh, this was not, maybe we're okay, okay, we're okay. So when you shut your bottles, this is a pro tip that I did not do just now. When you open your bottle, you should open it either towards you or away from what you don't want it to mess with. And then when you close your bottle, close it away from your project because I just closed that and it just, phew, right across so good tip there okay so I'm gonna use my number 13 I'm gonna blot off on the paper towel Grab the glasses okay and that hair and I'm gonna make a band around here so I'm gonna just line the bottom of my band I taped off the upper two and I can take well I actually don't want to I should have put that all the way next to my edge so I can move it. Do, do, do. So let's get it right there. 
So I'm doing a square edge on this instead of a round edge. And then when you have this little skinny guy, you wanna make sure that you kind of dry off your edge. So see the paint that was on there so that it doesn't wrap around and make a mess. And then you just keep moving your band. Such a handy tool. You guys, it's in all the sizes. So they graduate sizes. And I don't know if you've ever taped a band, but um, it's a mess, it's wasteful. It is, it is all the things I don't like about that kind of technique. Anyway, see what fast work this um, ink sweeper makes on this project. If you guys have ink sweepers, let us know so that other people know that they're amazing. Like how fast is that? Okay, so I'm gonna not finish this on camera because this is boring. <laughs> like it's a good tip to it share. Is a good tip. But well, I can talk while you're yeah. painting. Um, we had we saved a few things so that we would have things to talk about while while Patty was painting and while we were drying. We go live every Tuesday on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And then on Saturdays, we release project videos or technique videos on our YouTube channel. And these are a, the Saturday videos are one of, it's a solo artist and you'll get to see some, us put together a project. So for our video for last week, Guys, we, this is so cool. we teamed up with Goodwill and with Deco Art as Deco Art released their new Deco Earth line of paints, which are reclaimed paints from Old House Paint. And so we did a little upcycle. We went to Goodwill and this basket. So if you haven't seen the video, I'll share it. But this basket used to have an Easter bunny on it and it used to be blue and it was like a cute little like it's, Easter basket. Yeah. But now we transformed it into a garden truck. And so we show you how to prep a surface that is already painted that you pick up at a thrift store. We show you how to mix and match your stencils, how to mix and match your colors, and then how to kind of bring it all together was really a theme for this project. Patty and I had several conversations of, yeah. how do we bring it all together? Let's bring it all together. And so this is a super fun project that, you know, we went and got this from Goodwill and it was cheap and it was cute. And 250, I think. Yeah, and yeah. now it's Now it's cuter. going it's to my garden. Cute. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then look at how cute we even took the paint stir sticks mm -hmm. and made them use the um, the stencil for all the things. Yeah. And now you can stick those right in the ground, and then they're just a fun. You can do them in whatever color your garden is mm -hmm. in. And if you want to know trend alert, mushrooms. Oh, goodness, okay, so yes. one of the benefits of being, so I have the boutique in town. Mm -hmm. We go to market um, once or twice a year, and we get sent catalogs like you would not believe there are mushrooms in every single solitary catalog. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's like a car catalog. Mm -hmm. It's like, hi, I'm a mushroom. I, I belong here. There's you know? something. Yeah, yes. it's a big deal. And they're slowly starting to invade our our home decor mm -hmm. at our house. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. We are getting into it as well. All right, so. Well, they're just that. a magical fairiness. I don't know. Yeah, it's um, So the word is whimsical. We were going over spelling words with Aria the other day, and whimsical is one of her words. And my husband said, I have never heard that word. And I was like, well, I mean, you're a man. Yeah. Like, whimsical is not going to come up. I say whimsical a lot in yeah. art and reading and fairy tale princess stuff. And I was like, you know, most women aren't. Talk, like don't say torque like that's a bad word so with our youtube channel i'm going to give you a sneak peek of what you can expect this weekend on our youtube channel so we've actually been doing um some fun research here and seeing what some of our all-time best sellers are and so this week i pulled one of our all-time best sellers out and we are going to be showing you tips on how to use foil through your stencils. And we love, love this. So how this one turned out. Like adding foil, it just makes it, oh, it just makes it so fun and it gives it some pop and it gives it some sass. So 
that is coming this weekend. Um, Are you we, guys tracking how fast this how fast is she's going? Yes. Steve has it um, popped up. He had me showing my project while you're still painting, so they're getting to see this. We have yeah. a lot of comments on, we love last Saturday's YouTube video with the basket. The basket is so cute. So, someone said, Kat asked, what's phasing Kat. out? Home decor trend-wise. So, since the mushrooms are coming in, what's phasing out? Um, oh, I just put my finger through that. Hey, I lost so my we have, DNA um, behind. we were told by a supplier last July mm -hmm. that gnomes are not as popular as they had been. However, but we're still seeing them everywhere. Everywhere. They're in I all mean, the catalogs still. I feel like that supplier, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, because, I mean, if you are painting with stencils, it's very possible that you might be um, painting with stencils to make your project go faster because mm -hmm. stenciling is an amazing way. Look at what just happened there. I bordered that whole thing um, and it didn't take any time. I'm going to sink my stencil, I mean my ink sweeper, into my water with the back of a brush. Carrie's brilliant idea. Thank you. And then I'm going to sort of wipe off my fingers. Um, and so, but the gnomes. Mm -hmm. So it is very possible that that company... Um, Maybe their creative team lost their creative juice. Yes. And so we have like a ton of designers that we work with. And the amount of cuteness coming mm -hmm. off of gnomes has been incredible. So yeah. I don't see them leaving. I see them dying down. Yeah. But I don't see them going away mm -hmm. because as long as there's creativity with it, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I would say... Yeah, even the truck. The truck is the, still popular. Now, I did, I did notice. The truck has changed colors. It, yes. Um, it has morphed yeah. into whatever you need it to be. I did, Patty and I did talk the other day. I haven't seen as many round door hangers mm, yeah. on in the catalogs. That's not to say they're not there. We, the catalogs we're getting are still not super summery and not super yes. like jumping into the front door decor. So that could be it. It'll yeah. be interesting to see once all mm -hmm. the spring and summer stuff comes. But those were the gnomes. And yeah, the I mean, the round, round door and... hangers really hit really, really yes, hard. Yes, they did. All right, we are going to antique. Um, I'm going to turn my palette. Um, if you guys don't know what this is, this is Mylar, and we are using it as our palette paper. And it is an amazing thing to use. I'm using um, Hedgewood 1206. From Minwax water-based paint, uh, water-based stain, pardon me. I'm going to use just a little dot of it. And I want to antique these little edges around here. And I'm going to get one of the cool tricks that you absolutely should. Um, this is my daughter-in-law. Um, I thought this one up. But just a honey bottle with water in it so you can drip water when you need it. And you need, like my... Water's not clean right now. Mm -hmm. So in order to um, have clean water, I need a clean source. And when you're painting, you don't want to go to the sink and come back and do the thing. All right, so I'm going to fold this towel over. I'm going to pick up. I call this the shoe shine technique because it's exactly how you shine shoes when you're in the military. Because I was, my dad was, my husband was. So um, brothers were. Like we have a big military family. All right, and then I'm going to go over the entire edge and I'm just gonna hug that little bit of antiquing I'm gonna make my corners sneak in just a little bit and so notice what I have here I have a dark tip and then I have this wet back where I can totally blend with the back and so my finger is on it long and it's crumpled up so that I get like even pressure so that's what the technique looks like and I'm gonna need to moisten and be wet just a little bit. Repick up, blending straight across, and it tones. This could be a mother color as well. We're really mother coloring things, um, but it is toning the gray so that the gray goes along with the cream. Okay, so that is an important technique. Once again, a little bit more water. Being able to control the water just one drop at a time is incredible because if you dip into here, it's just going to be too much. 
So even though I didn't get a snow day today, my husband did, and he was out at the barn with our baby goat, and he guys, said he let him out to play in the snow, and he was jumping all around, and he face planted and kept shaking his face and couldn't get the snow off his face. So he adorable. sent me some videos and pictures. So if there's a cute one, I'll make sure that I share it on our page because you can never have too many cute goat, cute pictures. goat pictures and videos. I mean, it's adorable. That's, that goat is adorable. It is adorable. Cindy asked, could you use watered paint instead of the stain? Um, you could. Um, what is... So, Cindy, that's such an excellent question. Um, so, the stains are made out of pigments that are not um, contaminated with a lot of filler. So, the definition of a stain is something that is sheer. And um, this is sheer this color like so this brown and it doesn't have like this has got a lot of white filler in it so um and that's why red doesn't base is because there's not in order to keep the red color you have to have um you if you put filler in this it would turn it pink so that's red is just something that cannot have a filler in it so you can but um, you don't, maybe you won't get the, the magic of it. We know, do have so. a video that you've done on mm -hmm. how to make fake oh, yeah. stain yeah. out of acrylic paint. So I'm going to share that. And, and it's then, like choose wisely. Can yeah. I ask you to give that a hit of the blow dryer for me? You got it? Okay. 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 okay cool. Yeah. You guys, if you see me going over here, we've got like multiple <laughs> cameras doing the thing. And I'm not, they're really good about flipping back and forth to in whatever and out, one you're looking at yeah but today he's by himself and it's like Ugh, you know so um anyway so today we are going to do a really cool little lesson um this is i'm going to show you how to you're base coat with oh, me ah he just said that um i'm going to show you how to base the inside of this heart um so that's something that we haven't covered but maybe one time mm -hmm. And we're going to do a Valentine because Valentine's like a holiday that you like maybe want to nod to, but you might not want to dedicate to. And so we're going to do the anyway tray insert. Mm -hmm. Then we can flip it over and then I'll bet you can guess what holiday we're going to do next. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just the springtime is just like holiday, 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 holiday. And so it's nice to have the change and have the tray that's on your table or your side table or wherever um, your sick table, whatever the things are, um, it's nice to have that transition. I like it. Okay, so we are going to put our stencil down, and we should measure. So we're going to take our T-square, and we're going to two and a quarter, almost two and a quarter, and see if we're about even. Two and three quarters. You're balancing act. Yeah, it's always a balancing act. So two and a half is my magic number, and I think I've got it nailed. And I don't think I'm even on either side. Mm, close. Really, really close. Okay. Make sure I stayed kind of straight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our red. And I did pre-shake this. This is not a red. This is number 60. Well, you all right. can't tell. We have sixes and we have nines. So if I have... flip the bottle over this way, it's now number nine. If I flip it over this way, it's 60. So it's like, ah. It's so and then I have to read. So. Yeah. 60? Maybe clearer labels that are in order. Yeah. With underlines. Okay, so we're going to tape. When you tape on your stencil, you are going to look for your edges. My edges were just painted. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to tape through my letters. If you have two holes on your stencil, on your tracing pattern, on any of that stuff, then you will be able to... Um, just tape through it and then it won't move. If you tape in two places, there's no no nudging. I want to talk about the elephant in the room with red. So I, I don't need to do it first, but if we look at how light that color is on here, if I can get the stencil up, it's so transparent, okay? 
Red is transparent, like nobody's business. Get a multi-masker out. Um, multi-maskers, guys, if you don't have one of these, you need at least one. I recommend two because you can use them to um, mask both sides of something. But I can keep my stencil clean. So I can go right through here and then flip it over. So what I'm doing right now is I'm giving myself an outline and then we're gonna base coat the heart. We wanted the heart based and we want it polka dotted. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. But this is gonna be my pattern, my line. Tracing my lines with the stencil. Okay, so now we take that stencil off and I have a perfect outline. Okay, so now this is the part where it's trickier. So um, this is all, I kind of have stayed away from this mostly because it be requires some hand skills, okay? So when you are dealing with an artist brush, this is a Taclon brush. Um, if you go to studior12.com, um, our brushes are hand curated by me um, over the last 30 years. Um, they are some of the most incredible brushes. They last forever. Those of you who have bought brushes like that from us, make sure you put it in the comments so that other people know this is an actual legit deal. Um, but this is important that you have a good brush. If you have a cruddy brush, then you won't get a good technique. Okay, so that's super important. Can you tell me what size that one is? Um, does it say on there? It does, but I can't read it. I know, okay. right? She's like, mmm, <laughs> your eyeballs did big. Okay, so with red, we find it very, very convenient to base coat with a layer of gray because red does not base. Okay, so I'm going to, that was number, you got it? 36. 36. All right, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint, and this is the technique part. Your brush needs to be pretty straight up and down. Okay, so you're going to go next to your edge, and you're going to see how it's not writing position. And I'm just going to go right next to my edge, and I'm going to run it along. If you notice when I load, I load in here, and then I just kind of push it down on. I'm almost offloading onto my palette. So it is super important that you just don't have a big crud ton of paint goobing out on the edge. Used all kinds of made up words there. Goobing out. Hmm. So if you are, I shared the link for this brush. So this is our Clearly Amazing line. And we have them in a flat. We Oof. have it in an angled. And then we have it in a... What is, is it would you consider it round? it's a filbert a, a filbert yeah. mm -hmm. so for those unpainterly people it's kind of got like a a rounded ovally shape yeah it's, it's not really domed, good the but filberts it's, are mm -hmm. really nice for making flowers and blending and slip slapping and there's a whole bunch of techniques where that background idea is a really good idea we're yeah. going to do some backgrounds so see i'm just going through and i'm just making a sheer coat um to cut the cream background. And then I'm smearing it through the middle to get rid of the excess on it. And then of course to base coat. And the brush that I would start with, if it were me, I would start with either a set or a middle um, half inch or a number eight flat is a fantastic, like that, that is a diehard brush. It's like having a, a boiling water pot for your kitchen. Like you gotta have one, right? And that's the one. So that would be one that I would default to. Okay, so we're just going to base this in. Almost there. And notice my hand angle. That's the most important thing. And now I'm reaching across because I need my hand to be anchored. And that's another really good pro tip is you got to anchor on something. So sometimes you can take a bottle of paint will give you more um, plunging ability. So you could put your hand on something else, a book um, or something like that. But you've got to anchor the hand. If you're trying to paint with an unanchored hand, it, it's going to be ugly. 
All right, so now I need to make that even because everywhere where you can see cream, you're gonna see the red poke through, like it's gonna look like wrong. So we gotta dry that and get it kind of more solid. So now I'm just kind of putting makeup on freckles. We're gonna call this makeup on freckles. So those little places are the freckles. I have a dog named Freckles, so right now I'm like, oh, freckles. Um, anyway, so we just, and he has a lot of freckles. He does have a lot of freckles. While we're on the overhead camera, Steve, I would like to point out that if you're looking at Patty's palette, so she has the white on there, and then she has a couple of different color grays. And when you're choosing your undercoat color, the one that she has is a mid a mid color between mm -hmm. the, the light and the dark. Yeah. If you do it too light with the red, it's going to turn pink. If you do it too dark, you're going to have a hard time getting the color to show up over top of it and not be a and not turn into a dark color itself. Yeah. So um, red is red and yellow. Um, if and you're orange, yeah, yellows are the second other color that is just like a pain. Um, but we need our red, and so you'll see many, 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 many times. In my projects, this looks brown. I will almost always default to number 18 mm -hmm. because number 18 has filler in it. Yep. So you can see the difference. This is a pure pigment. That goes back to the question earlier, like why does this work a little bit better if you don't mix something in it is because it's pure and doesn't have a filler. But in this case, it's Valentine's Day and I need to have a more bold red. So I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer for a hot second. Sorry for the noise. If you're wearing earbuds, I apologize. Okay, so now we go in with the red. Um, very important that you shake, 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 shake your red um, because if you haven't used it and the stuff gets like down into the bottom, your pigments might sink. And so you wanna have it like completely like shaken. Okay, and so that's, I did that off camera. So now we'll go into our red. And now we base the same way. You know, it'd be really smart if the person that needs the glasses would put them on her eyeballs. <laughs> so we just go right up next to that line. And we're going to rebase that line, re-stencil that line. And you'll note that this is showing those freckles again. And then as you get better at brush control, you notice I just slid my hand down. So as you get better at your brush control, you'll be able to um, advance your skills. And if you are new, so if you have come to us from the decorative painting world, then you've probably used these types of brushes yeah. before. Yeah, if exactly. you are coming to us from the stencil world and you're like, eek, yeah. um, that's, <clears throat> that's okay. I do, I am sharing with you guys the playlist that we have on how to clean your brushes because how you clean your dome brushes is different than how you clean the type of brush that Patty's using right now. Yeah, so, and this is, um, this is why stencils, right, really? Because if I had a stencil, if I had a two-part stencil, we do a lot of two-part stencils. If I had a two-part stencil that had this heart so I could base, I could put the pattern on and then I could put my second part of that was the heart cut out. I could use the jumbo dauber, skip the darn brush and go boom, 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 and be done with coat one. Okay. So two part stencils are amazing. We have a ton of them, but it doesn't always make sense. And like this one, this one, the art doesn't need to be red underneath, but we chose to want to. So if you want to be able to choose, then this is like an advanced skill that you would want to have. Well, is. and it's also a, a good time to take a look at your stencils. Do you have another stencil in your collection that has a heart that mm -hmm. is already cut out? You can put that on the background of this and then just mix and match your stencils. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be this exact heart. 
It could be any size or shape that you desire. So did you see what just happened there is I put this bottle down as a lift for my hand because I couldn't, if I anchor here, I can't reach mm -hmm. with control. So I put the bottle down and now I can reach with control. At the end of the day, when you start getting into these Taclon brushes and stuff, you are in a control situation. Okay, so that is going to need a blow dry, but it's so see how yeah. the gray helped with your base. So this is extremely important. Um, it's just a valuable technique. Undercoat with gray for red when you have a sheer red. I love this um, antiquing with the Hedgewood. I think that's just a lovely color. That turned out really good. What do you guys think? Okay, I'm dry. Now we go back. It's basing pretty well. Yeah. That's that gray. So what are you guys painting right now? Let us... Let us hear from you, and then let us look forward to seeing what you guys post on Wednesday. So on Wednesdays on our Facebook page, we post a photo with a fun patty face and says, what are you painting? And then in the comments, our stencil fans show us the projects that they are working on, whether they be with Studio R12 stencils or not. We just want to see what you're doing, get some inspiration, and then... We use some of those photos on our website. So if you would go to, say, the Nutcracker Tall Porch Stencil, we've had a ton of photos sent to us. And so we'll have our photo that we've painted. And then you can see some different ways that the stencil looks on different backgrounds so you know what you're getting. And then we have lots and lots of customer photos with different design ideas and that was the way the reason that we started doing that so that we could share and get inspiration from you guys and then everybody else get inspiration as well agreed you guys make the best stencil fans ever yes, absolutely um janice said if you didn't use the gray to undercoat would it have turned out pink it would have been five base coats easy easy five um, I think I'm going to call this at this um, level. I think it's fairly even. I'm going to fill it with polka dots, um, which is going to also be, I'm going to have to do the polka dots last. So polka dots take forever to dry. So um, really important to know that they take forever yes. to dry. So um, know that and then try to do them last. And then try to do them where your cat's not going to come step on your project and stuff like yes. that. So store it in a different place. We have animal wars going in our house right now. Yes. Uh, we have a new puppy. Yeah. Ooh, the cats aren't, they're not happy. Freckles is not happy. Ooh. We have all the unhappiness going on. Ooh. So Beth said, thank you for this lesson. I struggled with coding large letters like with porch signs. So Beth, I'm going to share a video with you. Because if you do have the stencil, uh, if you are using a stencil to paint the large letters, we do have some tips on that, that you can do your large porch signs mm -hmm. and the large letters with the jumbo daubers or even with a roller. We have done them both ways because it does get tedious to, okay. Sorry. It's okay, to do the large letters. I was okaying to myself okay. and then I realized Ready? I okayed out okay. loud. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, so I went back and just touched up just a little bit where it was looking a little bit freckly. And so I'm going to give it a little dry and then we're going to finish this up. I think just a few more minutes, honestly. Okay, so now my stencil has, or my background has had time to dry and cure up a little bit, so I'm not as worried about my tape sticking and peeling off my paint. And so I will 
get the glasses. I got tape on fingers and glasses and all the things. So it's important to line that up. And you always go on opposite sides. And so we'll go with the red first. Suddenly it got very quiet. It got very quiet. <laughs> so I'm going to do that red and give it a coat or two so that it doesn't look odd. So we had some of our stencil fans tell us that they're waiting for some happy mail. Happy mail! So they can paint their next project. Um, That's Deb, like a fun Deb, little play right? on happy meal. Happy meal. Happy mail. Happy mail. And then Deb says she's painting tissue boxes for the winter season. Sue is painting a box for a new baby. A friend Yay. is having a new grandbaby. Oh, babies. Baby season. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love baby season. I am a fan. Okay, and tell us again why you're going back over this heart with the stencil. So I'm going back over it because my red that was grayed, I actually should have um, undercoated my pattern area with gray. the gray so that the colors will match. And that's actually going to be a really good question lesson in just a second. And to see what it looks like. Yeah, with the undercoat see what the difference not. between the undercoat will be. It might look like it has a little bit of a fade. Mm -hmm. I think it is looking rather like that. Than, yeah. Rather than having that bold. Yeah, so, light. and then I'm, oops, hi. Hello. I probably don't need to keep it out of the E because um, the E is going to be black or dark gray. So, like, I wouldn't have to actually mask it. I think that's important. I'm going back. I need to stop going back over so you guys can see what it looks like on the cream. I got a job to do, and I'm just getting it done. Do man. your job. Do your job. Okay. So see how that's super light and the, the red is super strong. Okay, that is the difference. And so I am going to put that back down. And I'm not going to worry about it not lining up because I think that's going to be fine. It's just going to look whimsical. Yeah, <gasps> good use ah, of a spelling vocabulary word. word. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Whimsical is one of my favorite words, actually. Whimsy. A good word. Yeah. Tell Dustin, tisk tisk. Gonna have to get him reading some books. So, and then spelling whimsy is always a tough one for me. I can say it, I can use it, I can use it in a sentence, but I, I always want to put my H's and my E's and things in the wrong places. Okay, so we're done with that for right this minute, and now we're gonna go into um, think black for the whole thing. Black it is. Okay, so shaky, shaky. Number 28. Number 28. 28. Thanks, Steve. And you guys, wait until your happy mail arrives because, so if you don't know what the happy mail is, Carrie, you want to tell them? About our project of the month. So here it's at Studio R12, we do a project of the month. Every month is completely different. And we are six months in now, which is crazy. And so what we do is every month we do a pre-order that is open for a week or two, depending on other things that are going on. And you can pre-order a project of the month. And then they are always shipped around the 15th of the month. So those of you who pre-ordered our January project of the month, it is on its way. And we are super excited. We Guys, love this cool. project. And we have worked really hard. We are ready for February and we're getting ready for March. And we do the pre orders so you don't know what you're going to get until you actually box. get it and open. So it is definitely happy mail. But we have decided that six months after the release mm -hmm. of the pre order, we are going to release the. The project. So now that we are close to February, our first box, which was in August, we are going to be releasing those products. So keep your eye out, sign up for the Studio R12 newsletter, 
so yeah. that you know when you can get those. So if you didn't grab it when it was a pre-order, yeah. you'll be able to grab it pretty soon in the future. Well, and I think what's very important is that all of the products that we are including in the project of the month are all brand new products. So there are things that you haven't seen before. There are things that we haven't produced before. So they're brand new. So you're getting the cutting edge of the thing, you know. Um, I want to take a moment. So I need three multi-maskers for this little moment right here. You could tape this and it would work out. Just say, let's go here. And do I need three? Am I being a, a Fibber McGee? I think I'm being a Fibber McGee. Yeah, I only needed two. Just crush that. <laughs> All right. So, but sometimes you do um, need more than one. Yeah. And if taping is just such a drag. I really don't enjoy taping. Um, you've heard me say it before. When we introduced this um, this um, multi masker, um, we had um, Boardroom 46 is our like a uh, cork and canvas kind of store and boutique in town. And we introduced them to our teachers and like some of the teachers cried because they the taping of like the wheels on the little red truck. Oh my and, gosh, oh my, all the details on the red truck. I'm Flowers. talking like an hour of taping, you mm -hmm. know, just stupid things. So yeah, this just makes it so much more easy and mo, mo better. Okay, so we're going to get that little nose right on in there. I'm going to go back and get one more coat while I'm here. This is such a simple, cute project. One of the tricks that I like to do when I'm using a multi-masker is give them a little piece of tape. It helps them stay in place so you could tape like the circle. And now when I'm moving them, I can use the tape to move them and they also I have a place to stick them. So just grab that. I like to use the bigger dome brushes and because I like to use the bigger dome brushes, that means they can kind of ghost into my other color areas. And that's important not to do. Then you're just, if you think, like, so wise words, where am I at, Steve? Okay, wise words. If you think that it is, um, takes too long to wipe off your paint and do any of that, then think about how long it's gonna take you to fix your mistakes. So take your time, go a little slow, and then don't have to fix. Fixing is crappy. I don't like it. So I am stippling because I'm going over the dark. I could swirl. It wouldn't be a problem either way. And now we go back to the beginning. The neat thing about swirling, which I did here, is it'll be dry by the time I get back to it. So I want to hear what kind of things people are painting. Um, I have already read all the ones that we okay. have received so far. So, back to the masker. And just take it away. It's like, Calgon, take me away. And I'm probably going to need one over here. While I was getting links, have you talked about why you are stippling instead of swirling? Um, I think I'm stippling because I'm being impatient. Um, so I think I'm stippling because I want to get there faster. And I don't like to stipple. Like, I don't like to stipple. But um, if you stipple, you'll get stronger coverage yeah. quicker. And so I'm on this light background. And I feel like I've taken a lot of time to do mm -hmm. some of these techniques and stuff. So I'm just like, let me get done. Um, but it's, notice my coverage is completely stronger Yeah. by doing that that way. Here, need two of them. Debbie says she's painting a summer welcome with a bird. Yay! 
Isn't it nice to paint summer things when you're yes. in the middle of like the frozen tundra land? Ugh. Now, Debbie, are you painting your bird with a stencil or are you freehanding your bird? I have. Patty has done both. I like, um, I'm happy for layered stencils. <laughs> Same. I'm happy for layered stencils. You guys, there's nothing like painting a chicken that has a multi-layered like bunch of stuff and you don't have to figure out where yeah. each feather needs to go and stuff and you can freehand a little over it once sure. you do it so mm. okay we're um, getting close to revealing and then we can polka dot so make sure you stick around for the polka dots it's a very important lesson that i have for you and it seems so silly to say that there can be an important lesson for a polka dot but there's a trick that you're going to want to know you'll never forget it and you're going to be like oh this is way better Carol says she mostly does sewing projects in January and get yes. back gets back into stenciling. So we've kind of been in our homesteading mode. And so January is our month to try new things before we start planting everything. So we've been making bread and butter and all the things in the kitchen. Yeah, the DIY spirit is strong here at Studio R12. <laughs> Like, we are definitely into DIY. Okay, so we have one more coat, and I think I do have to hit it with the blow dryer. Um, I'm actually really excited to show you guys the, um, the polka dot technique. Who knew? Who knew? Okay, because I stippled, that's why I had to blow dry. If I was swirling, I would do multiple thin layers and not have to blow dry. I do, I don't like stippling. Like, I do not. Okay, looking for anything that needs a little extra, maybe right here where it transitions from red to the other color. All right, let's reveal. We are ready, dun, 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 drum roll. Ta-da! All right, so I love it. And now we are going to do the technique. Okay, so, hmm, white or cream? I feel like white's the answer. But I think I so, I think gonna... it'll pop. Yeah. Okay, so um, the little bit of broken line and the out, outline-y thing, if you don't like that, um, then what you can do is go back with your brush and you can fill it in right to up there, right to your edge, and then make your edge the new line, okay? So, or you could also use a liner brush and you could give yourself a little black line right around there. So um, you can also use a marker. If you use a marker, you want to, um, do a um, spray coat of varnish before you do anything else because marker will erase with um, a brushed on varnish. So you wanna be careful of that. All right, couple of techniques. Number one, you have to have fresh paint to do any kind of dotting. If you have dry paint, then you'll end up with a little like um, raised thing on the top of your dots and then they'll be ugly looking. They're really kind of, it looks really kind of crappy. Use that word twice today. I never use that word. Anyway, won't look good. Okay. So what you do is you have fresh paint number and the, 27. huh? Number 27. Yeah. Number Thank 27. <laughs> White. Okay. So you're going to use the back end of a paintbrush. That's the size that you want. And you're going to have a clean paper towel. And so what you do is you go in, you're going to start at your farthest so you don't have to travel through your dots, all these techniques that you need to know about dotting, all right? You're going to go the farthest out that you need. And then if you want them the same size, you have to wipe it off and reload your paint, okay? Because if you keep loading your paint, you're going to end up with a growing dot and it will be bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? So we're just going to always wipe it off. 
and I'm going to share a video where we have painted dots with stencils and you did the same thing that you're doing here where you stenciled first and then you went back in and put the dots where you wanted them. So if you like the idea of filling in your project with the dots rather than doing the dots and painting over it, we do have a video showing how to do that. Yeah, the, um, so dots stay wet a long time. And so that is why we're doing them last. I can put this away, I can leave it alone, and then I'm not going to have to worry about the dots being wet. And I'm trying to stagger them. Um, notice like right here, I have almost like a rosette pattern. So I went like in a V shape pattern mm -hmm. so that I don't have a pattern. That this wipe off your brush. Um, I don't know how many of you have done the dot mandalas, and some of that is a big little oh, trend so right pretty. now. They're really cool. And there's dot tools. I don't know if you are they right there. They're right there on the by the glue gun. I don't know that I got all of them, but here's a yeah. couple of them. So these are super fun because they have sizes of dots, so you can do a fat dot or a skinny dot, and on each end of the things, they graduate and stuff, so you can do all kinds of dot sizes. There's nothing like having a dot tool that will give you a size of a dot. It's amazing. But they're comfort grip. They're, they're all the neat, oh, hi, all the neat things. And then we have a link for that from Amazon. I will share that. Um, Carol says she likes it. She uses this idea plus a stylus for ice. A, yeah, a stylus is fine as well. Um, I don't know where mine is. It's in there somewhere. The back of a brush is convenient. Um, some of your brushes come with a mixing end so they don't work. And sometimes you will have, oops, I don't think I wiped off. Um, sometimes you will have a favorite dotting brush. And so then I recommend. Off, um, I recommend taping the handle so that you can identify which one is your favorite so that you can always go back to it. So many techniques. Man, I didn't know. I hope that you guys have liked the lesson. I hope you give us a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. We need that help. Um, YouTube is interesting. So, um, but yeah, do that and then give us a subscribe, ring the bell. And see you Tuesdays and Saturdays. All right, I did it. You guys, yay. I love us. That's super cute. I like it. Okay, so see us on Saturday. We'll see you next Tuesday.